Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 to the power negative 7 over 4, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though the first method, you're not going to get the numerical value right away unless you use a calculator. Anyways, let's get started. So whenever we have an equation like this, with x to the power x, we can actually use a special type of function, which is called Lambert's w function. Hopefully you're familiar with Lambert's w function. Let's briefly talk about what it is, and then we'll get into the solution. So Lambert's w function is basically the inverse of the function x e to the x. So if f of x is defined as x e to the x, then its inverse can be defined as Lambert's w, and basically what Lambert's W function does is it takes x e to the x and turns it into x. It does the exact opposite of f of x, which is defined as x e to the x. Does that make sense? So for example, what is Lambert's W of e, right? You might be thinking. Well, I can kind of write this as Lambert's W of 1 times e to the power 1. And then from here, you see that our x value is 1. So this is going to equal 1. So one of the questions that come up all the time is, how many solutions are we going to get if x to the power x equals a constant, right? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of x to the power x. You know, it is a function that decreases between 0 and 1, and then increasing 1 to infinity. So it does have a minimum, actually, uh, so I'm sorry, that's, that's incorrect. It wasn't 0 to 1. It's actually another value that you can find, hopefully, by differentiating, and I think that should be 1 over e. Anyways, so it, it does decrease and then increase. But one of the things that's important, as you can see in this graph, is this graph is intersected by the horizontal line y equals 1. And I especially uh, looking at x greater than 0 because we don't really care for the negative values because the exponential when the base is negative it's kind of crazy all over the place so x is positive I'm not including 0 even though I'm not including it actually you can go ahead and include it so that 0 to the power 0 can be defined as 1 maybe can it be some people say it can't uh, anyways so as you can see here we have two intersection points on this interval. So in other words, if x is between 0 and 1, the, the horizontal line is always going to intersect at two points, which means you're going to get two solutions. But if you have an x value that is greater than 1, or y value that is greater than 1, then you're going to get a single intersection point. So that's going to be a single solution. Make sense? So it's important to look at our value in this case the y value which is 1.22884399958 which is obviously greater than 1 therefore there's going to be a single intersection point so this means we're going to have a unique solution so let's go ahead and try to find it express it in two different ways but first using lambert's w function okay ready so here's how we proceed we start with x to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 to the power negative 7 over 4. I'm going to go ahead and call that c. c is a constant. And then at the end, I'm going to back substitute. So I don't, I don't have to write this ginormous exponential number. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is natural logging both sides. So let's go ahead and rewrite this equation. x to the x equals c. And then we're going to go ahead and ln both sides ln x to the x equals ln c and properties of logs you know the x is going to move we're going to get x ln x from here equals ln c and then we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of transformation here because for Lambert's w function in order for that to work you do need an input like x e to the x or t e to the t or something times e to the power the same thing make sense okay so how do I get that though? I don't have e to do something, I have ln. Easy, you can just use substitution. Let's go ahead and replace ln x with t. And then from here, we're going to get the following. ln x equals t. And then since the base is e, you know, it's hidden, it's not written. 
x is going to become e to the power t. So you can basically write this as t e to the t equals ln c, and that's actually perfect from a Lambert perspective. And now we're going to go ahead and Lambert both sides. So let's go ahead and w both sides, and that's going to give us w of this equals w of that. And as you know, Lambert w of t to the t is equal to t, so t is just going to be w of ln c. That's simple. But let's go ahead and back substitute what is c, what is ln c, or we can actually try to find x from here first, and then at the end we can substitute because that's going to be easier. Now notice that we got t value, but t is what? t is ln x. So let's replace t with ln x. And then from here, since the base is e, we can go ahead and write x as e to the power w of ln c. We're so close. Now what we're going to do is replace the c with what it is. And remember, c was 2 to the power, 2 to the power, negative 7 over 4. But when you ln this, again, the same rule is going to apply. This is our exponent. We're going to move it to the front. And x is going to become e to the power w of 2 to the power negative 7 fourths times ln 2. So whatever that value is, you find by using a calculator, probably Wolfram Alpha, and then do e to the power that number, and you're going to get the x value. But with the second method, this was the first, right? Okay, usually I start with the first method. I didn't even write first method. Anyways, this is the first method. So with the second method, we're going to be able to find numerically what that value is. Okay? And you can check. Definitely put it into a calculator. And then let's check with our result from the second method. Okay? So here's how it goes. We have 2 to the power negative 7 over 4. First of all, I'm going to write it as 2 to the power 1 fourth minus 2. You might be wondering why because there's something about the 2 to the negative 2 and 1 fourth. Notice that? Okay. We're going to separate them now. 2 to the power 1 fourth times 2 to the power negative 2. And aha, I got 1 fourth because this is 1 fourth. You get the idea? So we can write this as 2 to the power 1 fourth times 1 fourth. And then how do I... Wait a minute. This was the exponent, not the whole thing, right? Yes. Because our number was... 2 to the power, 2 to the power negative 7 fourths, but the, now I know that this is equal to 2 to the power 1 fourth times 1 fourth, which can be written as 2 to the power 1 fourth times 2 to the power 1 fourth, kind of like this. And then we can put these two guys together and write this as 2 to the power 1 fourth to the power 2 to the power 1 fourth. You get the idea? Because if you have a to the power mn, you can write it as a to the power m to the power n, or a to the power n to the power m, because this is equal to a to the power nm. Okay, commutativity. Great. So now we got something super nice, because this is x to the power x. So we got x to the power x equals this, right? And from here, I can automatically say that, hey, x is supposed to be 2 to the power 1 fourth, which is the fourth root of 2, right? Wait a minute. Isn't there another solution? No, remember, when we looked at the graph, we realized, hey, there should be only one solution, and this is it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.